Your first home in Space Engineers is a crucial one. The start of the survival process can be difficult and drawn out. Having labour saving machinery, smart design choices and efficient layouts can make the experience more immersive and enjoyable. In this page of the Space Engineers Handbook, we will be discussing early game base design on both a functional and an aesthetic focus basis. This page is best applied to planetary starts as the focus will be on installations, but many points can also be implemented for space stations and asteroid bases. Most players starting platform resembles something like this. A basic foundation with a wind turbine tower and machinery cobbled together. It works and it gets you through the early game, but let's dive into building on this initial foundation. To start with, I recommend the following machinery be included in your starting bases. One basic refinery, one basic assembler, one survival kit, a small cargo container, an O2 generator and at least one battery. Connect these components with the conveyor system and ensure that the grid is powered to run those conveyors. We will discuss power generation later in the video. These basic components will need to be unlocked through the progression tree if you have that setting enabled. However, they are all early in their respective trees and easy enough to unlock. These basic systems will provide you with the means to reliably produce components and keep your suit energised and your oxygen slash hydrogen tanks full. Let's now take a look at resource gathering early game. As this guide is focused on the base itself, not ships or rovers, we will look at the eligibility of hand mining. For those curious, you can easily upgrade the pod into a mining vessel, however this comes with its own challenges and players may prefer the lower maintenance method of hand mining for the initial stages of the game. A player's starting mine would typically look like this. Let's work on making it more effective and easier on the eyes. We'll start off by adding a stair or ladder system down into the shaft. Should the player's jetpack run out or restrictor mod be in place, engineers will be able to easily navigate the mines. Next, we will add external railings around the opening of the mine. This will hopefully prevent rovers or players from straying into them. Trust me, getting your rover stuck in the mine entrance is no fun. Standalone freight containers can be placed near the entrance to deposit excess ore in, or for power packs and other items. Now inside the mine, a clever use of a landing gear, a battery and a spotlight can provide better visibility. These can be dotted around and used as torches in conjunction with the engineer's suit light. Structural beams and bridges can be used to make complex tunnel systems easier to navigate. Small bridge designs can save time when navigating your tunnels, whereas structural supports are for the most part entirely visual. While hand mining can be very useful for gathering specific ores, processing raw stone also yields the early game materials. An effective way to gather large quantities of stone initially is through building a drill rig onto your base. This will allow you to collect stone in the background while you focus your efforts on other tasks. Drill rigs can range massively in complexity. Some are linear and piston controlled, and others can employ both rotors and pistons to cover a greater area. Here is an example of a basic drill rig that will suffice for most players' early game ventures. We have a large cargo container, followed by a piston, a curved conveyor, and then an advanced rotor. From here, we have conveyors in a U-shape, with a downwards facing piston, followed by a drill. You can then alternate the rotor so the drill swings back and forth while the horizontal piston pushes the arm out. Once completed, you can lower the piston and repeat. This can help speed things up early game by providing you with a reliable stream of the early ores. You will still have to venture out and find the likes of cobble and ice by yourself, however this will cover most for you. Into the later stages of the game, drill arms can be deployed on bespoke platforms to mine specific ore deposits, but we won't dive too deep into that here. Next, let's talk power. There are a number of different ways to power your base in the early phases of the game, much of which can depend on your starting conditions and preferences. Let's talk through how best to employ them. Wind turbines are extremely efficient and easy to make, 
They provide a consistent power output and are ideal for early game bases, but of course they can only be used on bodies with atmosphere. The catch is, they need to be elevated above the ground and away from your base to allow for optimal wind clearance. This means large towers around your base, begging for lightning strikes and ships to crash into them. It can also make maintenance a nightmare. Let's work on solving these problems. Lightning is really, really, really annoying. You can beat it by bravely turning off weather in the world settings, or you can divert it away from your crucial systems with decoys. Decoys attract lightning and take the hit on behalf of your machinery. The blocks don't need to be powered either. I would scatter a few of these around your base with a layer of protection to add longevity to their service life. Ships or rovers hitting your turbine towers could cut power to your base, leaving you in a very tricky situation. To best avoid this, ensure that the foundation at least is fully built. It's usually not a great idea to fully build the whole tower, but bumper setups and spaced armour can also help along with lights and warning signs. For maintenance, you can just fly up using your jetpack, however it's often beneficial to have a means to repair them without a jetpack as power generation is crucial. A wraparound staircase system can be constructed or a ladder set up. Solar panels are often compared to wind turbines. On planets with no atmosphere, they're the alternative choice, but they can also be used to supplement power generation on atmospheric bodies. The drawbacks to solar panels are their clear dependency on lighting conditions. To best employ solar power, the panels need to have maximum light coverage across the surface area. Nighttime would render them temporarily useless, which cannot be worked around in certain scenarios. The most simple way to use solar panels on your early base would be to supplement power generation and having flat, static solar grids. This maximizes the sun coverage you will get while being very easy to construct and maintain. Going a step beyond this, we can increase our potential output by keeping the solar panels facing the sun. This can be done through a setup of rotors and hinges, using either solar alignment scripts or the turret controller. The turret controller can be set to always aim at sun, and when paired with a camera facing the same direction as the panel, it will track the sun for optimal power output. If you happen to land near a source of ice, or have easy access to a deposit, Engines can be an effective way to power your early builds and stations. However, unlike solar and wind power generation, engines are active, they will need to be maintained and fueled. One of the most simple and effective ways to implement engine power on your base is with a cycle system. For this, you will need at least one hydrogen tank, an engine, a battery, an O2 generator, and a button panel, which is optional, but will make things much easier. Load ice into the O2 generator until the hydrogen tank is filled. You can then also see the status of the engine's hydrogen capacity in the control panel. Once the base's batteries are running low, flip them to recharge mode and fire up the engine. You can check the battery's control panel section to see how long the engines need to run to fully charge the batteries. Once charged, flip the batteries back to auto and shut off the engines. Engines are frequently overlooked as a power source due to their upkeep time, hydrogen drain and relatively low power output. However, if you are situated by an ice lake or an ice deposit, they can be very effective. Also consider pairing them with the previously mentioned drill arms. This will keep a steady flow of hydrogen pumping into the engine, allowing you to be more hands off with the system. Now, let's talk about making our starting platform less of an eyesore and more of an engineer's outpost. Firstly, let's flush out the base by welding up components and structural elements with the resources we have now acquired. Next, we can build up the walls, floors and ceiling to make it actually shelter us and resemble an outpost. This will be subjective to your own build style and taste. Structural beams and reinforced areas will help your base make more sense to your eyes visually. Put these in areas you think a structure would require them in real life. Lights are a great way to add detail to your base. Interior lights will help you navigate at night, and an entrance light will make it easier to orient yourself in the dark too. Rotating lights can be useful on planets where sandstorms are frequent. Searchlights can be set to target enemies and highlight unwanted visitors for you. They can also be useful for spotting your base if you're flying around. Windows are another feature commonly overlooked. Having a few viewports or windows improves natural light and makes your home feel more open and complete. It also allows for quick scanning of your surroundings. 
And that wraps up the early base design guide for the Space Engineer's Handbook. From here, you can continue to expand and improve your base with features such as docking bays, rover ramps, defences and more. Be on the lookout for upcoming pages where I'll be covering more useful guides and tips for Space Engineers. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed please like, comment and subscribe and as always, take care everybody.